Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this DS430 industrial endoscope that Depstech sent me to review. So first up I'll take it out of the case, we'll do an overview of the unit, check out some of its features, and then I'll test it out on a few things around here and see how it works. Before we get started, I'll also mention that there is a product link down in the description below. You can check that out if you want to learn more about this endoscope. So first up, you can see that the endoscope comes in this plastic case with locking clips on the handle. So we'll just pop these up to open it up. You can see inside the case there's a foam lining with plenty of space around to cushion everything here. So included with the endoscope is a set of basic instructions and a thank you card. Next up we have the endoscope itself. In the middle here are some accessories, a USB charging cable, and a micro SD card. And then over here we have the control head and view screen for the endoscope. So the first thing I'll do is pull the micro SD card out of the container and load it into the control head. On the bottom there's a plastic dust cover that I'm going to pop open and you can see underneath it are the charging port and micro SD slot. So I'll take the micro SD card and install it in the slot. So I'll get this plastic wrap off of the endoscope here and then we'll take a closer look at it. So taking a look at the endoscope you can see here that it is made of semi-rigid flexible tubing. You can see that I can bend it pretty much any direction I want to but it'll hold its shape when I let go of it. The endoscope tubing feels like it's pretty well made. It's got some heft to it and I think it'll take some abuse over time. So this is a dual camera endoscope and you can see the main camera is located in the very tip of the tube and has an LED light ring around it. The secondary camera on the endoscope is located on the side of the tube near the end right about there and you can see that it's got a single bigger LED for lighting above it. So the other end of the endoscope tube has a five pin circular connector with an aluminum shroud that threads onto the control head and locks everything in place. So taking a look at the control head, the screen is roughly three and three quarters inches long by about two and a quarter inches wide. On the very top of the control head there's a button here that turns on and off this four LED light at the top. Over here is a five pin circular receptacle for the endoscope itself. On the bottom of the unit there's a dust cover that conceals the micro SD slot and the USB charging port. And then of course over here is the control panel. So now what I'll do is connect up the endoscope. Now this connector is keyed and can only be inserted one way. You can see the keying is indicated by this red dot on the receptacle of the control head. What I'll do now is power the unit up by long pressing the power button down here at the bottom. So the unit's on and the camera is working as you can see. So before I go try out the endoscope, let's play around with some of the features. If I short press the orange button on the top, it'll actually take a photo of what the camera is viewing at the moment and store that on the SD card. If I want to turn on video mode and record video of what the camera is seeing, I long press the button. And then you can see up here in the top corner a little camera icon lights up and a timer starts and also the power button flashes to let you know you're recording. So to stop video recording we just short press the orange button and you can see now it's back in live view mode. So short pressing this rotate button will rotate the camera image 180 degrees. Short pressing it again puts it back to zero degrees. Long pressing this button will toggle between the main camera, which you're looking at now, and the side camera. So let's give that a try. And right now the side camera is just pointing back at the tripod so it doesn't look like much. And again, short pressing the rotate button will flip the image 180 degrees. And long pressing it will get it back to the main camera. The two arrow buttons at the bottom of the control panel adjust the brightness of the LED ring on the camera. Pushing the plus button turns the brightness up and pushing the minus button turns it down. So to access the menu system I'm just going to short press the menu button. So the arrow keys down here at the bottom of the control panel are used to navigate the menu system. Pushing the plus arrow moves the cursor down, pushing the minus arrow moves it up. So to access any of the menu items I push the OK button in the middle. You can see the sub menu pops up and then I can use the arrow keys to toggle through the options. 
In this case, we're looking at the resolution, and you can see that you can choose between 1080 and 720. I'm going to leave mine on 1080. The next option is the auto off function. Right now it's turned off. You can see that we can choose between various times or leave it off. I'm going to leave mine off. So the next menu option allows for the date and time to be set. You can see right now it's just kind of at the default. I'm going to leave it there and move on. The next menu item is for the language setting. You can see that there are various languages available. I'm going to leave mine on English. So the next menu item is used for formatting the SD card. And I'm going to skip that step for now by pressing cancel. The next menu item is for resetting to factory defaults. And again, I'm just going to hit cancel on that. So the last menu item has no function. It's just there to display the latest version of the firmware loaded onto the unit. And then to exit the menu, I just push the menu button again and we're back in live view mode. So to charge the unit, I would use the supplied USB cable, open up the dust cover, plug it in, and then plug this into a regular USB style charger. So two attachments were supplied with the endoscope that thread on around the main camera. The first one is just a standard hook that you could use to hook this onto something if you needed to. And the other one is similar, but has a magnetic tip that will stick to metallic items. Okay, so that's it for the overview. I think we're ready to go test this out and see how it works. So I've pulled one of the spark plugs out of my old Honda CM400 here. Let's get the endoscope down in the cylinder and see what the piston looks like. So what I'll do first is show you guys the view through the screen in real time. And then what I'll do after that is splice in a clip of the video recorded from the endoscope as we look in the cylinder. So we're going to start off first going down into the bore with the main camera on the tip of the endoscope. And just for reference, I've got the light turned up to maximum. So there's a look at the piston in the sidewall of the cylinder. You can see I got a little bit of carbon build up on that piston, but this is an old motorcycle, so that's to be expected. So I can pivot this around a little bit and we can kind of change the angle in the view, but it is kind of a restricted space in here. So if I want to see the side wall better, what I can do is switch over to the side camera and we can hopefully see that. So I've switched over to the side camera now and we can get a better look at the side of the cylinder wall as I move this thing around. So here's the recorded footage from the main camera of the endoscope as we look around inside the cylinder. And here's a look at the footage from the side view camera. Next up, we'll try something a little bit different. Instead of looking into a small dark space like the cylinder bore, I'm going to use the endoscope to look inside of one of my old ham radios over here. So I'm going to use the main camera on the end of the endoscope, and we're going to try and go right in here into the base of the chassis and see how far in we can get. It's pretty dark in there, but the lights on the end of the endoscope seem to be doing a pretty good job lighting everything up. And you can see I can kind of get in there and see some of the circuitry inside of here. You can see the detail looks pretty good. We can read the marking on those capacitors there. You can even see the color code on some of those resistors. And it looks like the camera's doing a pretty good job keeping up with the changes in exposure and white balance as the lighting and focus changes. What I'll do now is switch over to the side camera and see how that looks. So there's what things look like with the side camera. Now it's a little bit harder to kind of get my bearings in here as I kind of move around because I'm not sure what I'm bumping into as I go forward. So there's a look at some resistors using the side view camera. So let's look inside my old Drake ham radio using the main camera of the endoscope. Now we'll take a look around using the side camera on the endoscope. So 
So some overall thoughts on the Depstech DS430 before I end the video. Overall, I think this is a pretty well-built unit and fairly well featured for its price point and intended audience. The only negative that I found with this is because the endoscope is kind of on the stiff side and because it connects up to the control head directly, the control head can kind of move around and drag around while you're using this. So you have to be mindful of that, be a little bit careful that you don't drop this or bang it into something or move it out of position where you can view it when you're trying to use the endoscope. But that's a fairly minor nitpick and kind of a trade-off for having a rugged yet flexible endoscope. So even though the endoscope is on the stiff side, it's still pretty flexible and should be able to get into most locations that you would need it to get into, especially in a heavier duty industrial type setting. I also like the dual cameras on this endoscope. Most of the time I'll probably end up using the main camera on the end, but there's times when that side camera will come in handy. Overall, the build quality of the endoscope and the control head seem pretty decent for the price point. All the connections are pretty hefty and made of metal and should hold up over time. So the display screen on the control head itself is plastic, so this will probably get scratched up over time. But you can record your sessions on the internal SD card or take pictures and put those on a computer and view them in more clarity if you need to, if your screen gets scratched up. I also kind of like the fact that this has an internal rechargeable battery. I don't have to fool around with trying to find AA batteries or leaving them in here and forgetting about them after a time and have them leak and corrode the battery compartment. And along those lines, the way that the battery compartment is molded into the body of the control head gives you a nice place to grip this and kind of move it around when you need to. There's probably a few more things I'm forgetting to mention, but I think I'll wrap it up there. If you're interested in the Depstech DS430 endoscope, there's a link in the description that will bring you to its Amazon product page. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.